Hey, what's up everybody? This is Craig Peters here from Sound Iron, and on today's Sound Iron session, it's a little bit of a special one for me because we're mixing two of my favorite musical elements. We're mixing orchestral music and metal. So this is a special episode of Sound Iron Sessions for me because um, I'm predominantly a guitar player. I'm not a keyboard player, so it's kind of cool to show you guys a little bit of how I work as far as doing more metal-based stuff, but also incorporating the orchestral elements. And we're gonna be using sound iron instruments on top. We also have a few other virtual instruments that aren't sound iron that I'll mention as well. For any of you guys who wanna know uh, the drum sounds or, or the bass that I used for, for this track. So for any of you guitar nerds out there that wanna know what I'm using for the guitar, this is a Kiesel Aries 7 string. It's a totally custom guitar, got guitar Marie pickups, and I pretty much use this for the bulk of all my guitar tracking. Uh, if, if it's acoustic or something like that, of course I have other guitars, but uh, this is predominantly my main uh, guitar writing workhorse. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and check out the track, and then we're gonna come back and show you guys what it did. All right, so getting into the track, uh, one of my favorite things to add to any sort of metal productions, if I can, is choir, because I just feel like, I don't know, it's just, it, it takes any sort of simple metal track and just makes it epic. It's, it's really easy to do. Um, so let's just go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and solo just the band stuff so you can see how it sounds by itself. So it just sounds like your standard metal track. And for the drums, I'll go ahead and I'll show you guys what I'm using. So I'm using the uh, Get Good Drums Modern and Massive kit. Uh, this is just honestly one of my favorite, oh, favorite drums to use because um, it just they, they sound really thick and they have a nice uh, beefy, thick tone to them. And uh, it's, it's a really simplified kit. There's only three toms, snare, and kick. Um, the guys at GGG did a really good job with this kit. Uh, they have some other ones as well that I like to use, but as far as metal drums, this is pretty much what I use. Uh, for the bass, I'm using the Euro bass from Submission Bass, and this is just, it's a virtual instrument bass, but um, I have a bass guitar, but I find it easier when I'm trying to do pre-production. I tend to just use virtual instruments because I kind of do a lot of most of my orchestral writing with virtual instruments anyway. So doing it uh, with the bass, you know, it's easy because if I want, I can go back and track it. But for pre-production purposes, if you guys are doing stuff like that, um, this is a really cool one. And uh, Ehrman over there, he did a great job with this one. Um, getting into the bass a little bit since we're here, um, let me go ahead and, and solo this. So what I did as far as the, the mixing goes, I have, I have two different instances of Euro bass. I have one low and one high. So if you listen to just the low, and with this I'm doing some uh, 
some crazy filtering. I'm basically just taking all the EQ frequencies and I'm just stripping them out except just for the low ones because I want it I want to treat the low and the high a little bit differently. And then for the high, that's where you're getting that clank and that tone because I wanted to process them differently because um, you know, and then I got I got it pretty slammed down. And then um, yeah, this is just a, sort of a mixing thing. Uh, I prefer to do it this way sometimes or most of the time probably. Really depends, but for metal stuff it tends to really work because you want to process certain bands of the EQ spectrum differently. Um, getting back into the choir, so let, let's go ahead and start adding some of these different elements. So we have the band element. Let me go ahead and start from here. You know, pretty simple. And then let's go ahead and add some choir. And for this, I'm using one of my favorite choir patches ever. And this is from uh, Requiem Light, and this is the Ensemble Marcados. So what I like about this is if you set it to phrase, you can basically just kind of play in these different... It just makes it super fun and really easy. So that's the first thing that I started adding on this track because I wanted these, uh, these you know, drum stops and cymbal stops to have a little bit of that, you know, accenting on those. And just adding that little bit of choir already takes it into that kind of symphonic metal uh, progressive like Symphony X, Dream Theater kind of stuff, which I'm a huge fan of. Um, starting off the track, I, I not only used orchestral instruments, but I also used some sound design stuff from Glitch Hero. I also used uh, some, some solo vocals as well. So this is how I, I wanted to start it off with something, you know, like some kind of cool boom or kind of, you know, give the beginning of the song a little bit of a little bit of zazz. So. so I just used that. Uh, this is from the Shutter Ensemble. I just kind of was, you know, all the notes are laid out, so I'm just kind of playing around until I find the sounds that I like. So after that, for the most part, it's pretty much just choir and band. And then once we get into bar six, that's where we start adding in some of the uh, orchestral strings. And with this, I'm using Hyperion Strings Elements. Uh, you can see I already have some of these panned in their own respective places that I thought sounded good. Um, let's just go ahead and actually listen to just the orchestral instruments themselves. <laughs> So some of the orchestral instruments that I have going on, like I said, I got Hyperion Strings Elements. I also have some Symphony Series Brass. I got these Staccatos. I got these Trumpet Staccatos. And then I got some of these Horn Rips, which uh, I always love using these in any kind of accents. Those are a lot of fun. And around measure 10, that's where I'm introducing some female solo vocals. And for this, I'm gonna be using the Voices of Rapture soprano. I threw some black hole on it. This is just a straight loaded up and this is what it sounds like. It's a it sounds really awesome by itself, but in the mix it sounds really cool. It, it really takes this part and makes it kind of haunting because I wanted it to, you know, keep introducing some some sort of new element, you know, every four bars or so. So I thought some solo vocals right here would be would be really awesome. <laughs> Just really takes it and makes it dark, and I really like that kind of stuff. If, uh, if you can't tell from my studio, I like more things of the darker aesthetic. But uh, let's see. Um, 
And then yeah, for the strings, I'm, it's just all it's just all uh, spiccato. I got these little runs. Oh yeah, and then there's a there's some Bartok pits on the end just to accent a little bit uh, on the basses. And in the context of a metal mix, it kind of makes those parts pop a little bit. And then this is when we start to get into kind of cool prog metal, you know, odd time land. Uh, I got this lead from Cruiser and Cruiser is just, you know, when you think of it, you think of like 80s synths, that whole 80s vibe. But there's some really cool leads on here and when I was first playing with them, the first thing I thought was like, oh, that'd be kind of cool. So when you think of like progressive metal or, or guys like Jordan Rudis that do a lot of those. All right, so now let's go ahead and listen to this part. It's in 7-8. I uh, wanted to do some kind of cool odd time riffing, so this is what I did. You can hear it's doing like a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, really, it's it's a really simple, it, it sounds trickier than it is. I definitely suggest if you don't mess with any odd time signatures, definitely try incorporating them in your music. Especially in stuff like progressive metal, because a lot of these guys are adding way more than just seven eight. You know, it'd be five eight, seven eight, nine eight, and go back and forth, four four, and just you know, it, it can really take the music and add that sort of you know that that technical sophistication, I guess, or whatever you want to call it. Um, but I wanted to add this lead on top of the guitars because I think stuff like this it, it really it kind of thickens it up a little bit, makes it sound a little bit interesting. So here's here's just the guitars. And then here's the guitars with the synth. So I really like blending synths with guitars, especially if you take the synths and pitch them really low, like maybe an octave or two below the guitar. Uh, you can really thicken them up and you can put them just enough in the mix to where maybe even you don't really fully hear it, but it just layers with the guitars and really kind of beefs them up. So this is them by themselves and then in the mix. So I really like that kind of stuff, and I'm also bringing back some of the uh, the Requiem Light Ensemble, the Marcados, just to accent on certain parts. And then over here, there's kind of like this really open section where the, the chords are just kind of, you know, ringing out. I have the Requiem Light going, so this is how that sounds. And then I also have some Olympus elements layered in here. I have the Legato Men and the Legato Women Divisi. Uh, this is how it sounds when you add all three of those together. And then I also have some pretty wild uh, lead arpeggios going on with Cruiser. So that kind of stuff's really fun, and I'm pretty much just using the legato men and women to add that sort of smooth transition between the notes, and then I'm using the Requiem Light Ensemble, and to, you know, when you put them on top together, it, it sounds, uh, sounds pretty cool. So it just kind of does that for a little while. And then before it comes back into the, uh, I guess like the main riff, or maybe it's sort of like a, a riff that you would hear probably maybe after a chorus or like a verse riff or something like that. Uh, I use this, uh, the sound from Glitch Hero. It's from the shutter. 
And this is just, uh, it's one of the risers, it's a low riser, and I thought it'd be cool to, to swell into that again after this section. <laughs> That's pretty much just a repeat of the part from earlier. Uh, for any of you guys that are wondering about the guitar tones, so what I'm using for that is I'm using the new Neural DSP Archetype Nolly. Uh, this is a really awesome amp sim. So for any of you who don't play around with amp sims too much, uh, pretty much without the amp sim, this is what the guitar sounds like. Pretty fun, right? But uh, adding this on here, And this tone's not really too super gainy. Uh, I just wanted to have kind of a little bit more of a raw or duller sound. Sometimes when you have a tone that doesn't really sound that great by itself, it can tend to sound a lot better in the mix. Um, uh, this, I mean, the mix I did for this is kind of how I would normally do it, maybe for, for doing pre-production for my own music, just because, uh, you know, trying to get it to sound, you know, as good as possible, but at the same time, I'm not trying to like overthink it too much. But hearing both the guitars together by themselves. And then with the bass. And then all together. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Sound Iron Sessions. This one was a lot of fun to write. And if you want to find any info about the libraries that I used in this video, make sure to go to soundiron.com to learn more. Uh, subscribe. If you haven't, make sure to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with all the videos that we're posting. We have a lot of really awesome stuff coming up this year, so you don't want to miss out. And uh, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.